Welcome back to Great Lakes Junction, everyone. We've got an oven to try and repair. Uh, the wife did some baking in it the other day and it worked great. And then we went to do supper in it and it no longer wanted to work. So I'm hoping it's just a temperature probe. Uh, we'll try that first. I happen to have a spare one for it already, so it doesn't cost anything. We'll see if that solves our problem. We have the back of the stove off now. There's the main circuit board that everything is controlled by with all your push buttons on the front. We replaced that twice already in this stove. One of those kept burning out in the old ones that we had and they finally put a heavier one in. They got smart and fixed it right. So it's been good ever since. So our temperature probe for the oven is this guy right here. So we're gonna unplug that Take this screw out, and this probe should just pull straight back out of the oven. That's it. Our new one. Plug it back in. That's your uh, light bulb socket for in the oven in there. Okay, the rest of our stuff, we're gonna check any loose wires. So this is on one side of your bottom heating element. There's the one on the other side. And your top heating element, we got one up here. And another one over here. So those are both tight, nothing's wiggling loose. Um, our fan. For the convection part of it, everything's tight there. Of course, we have it unplugged while we're poking around all these wires. So we're just checking all the connections, the ground, everything, making sure nothing has worked its way loose. We'll take another look at this circuit board just to see if there's any hot spots. Of any I don't want to have to change this circuit board again. I think everything looks good on that circuit board, so hopefully it's just this temperature probe. So I think before we put the back on, we'll plug it in, we'll turn it on and see if it starts to generate any heat in the oven or not. And it didn't make any difference whatsoever. So obviously that was not the problem. So I think we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to check the voltage first that's coming to the stove. Let's make sure we don't have a breaker issue or something in the basement that we're actually getting the right power. So we're still plugged into the wall at this point just because I want to test this voltage. So we have 125 there, 125 there, 250. So we're good there. So we don't have any supply issue of electricity coming from the socket in the wall. And there's no breaks or anything in the cord that's plugged into the wall because everything is making its way to the back of the stove. So now we'll unplug it from the wall before we start touching stuff in here. Since we know that's good. Uh, there is a small heating element in here. And this is in with the convection fan for the convection use of this. This element is working. Uh, when we were testing the oven last night, we tried all the different things, the broiler and stuff like that, and we put it on convection, and there was a small amount of heat starting to be generated. 
from in the convection fan from that burner. So that burner is working okay. Our temperature probe we know is working good because it's brand new. We have uh, electricity the way we should have. So we'll check the burners themselves now. So what we're going to do for that, let's move this up a bit. So these are our top burner connections up here. So we're going to unplug those wires. We're going to take our ohms meter and set it to ohms. We're going to check if we have any resistance in this burner. And we have 15, get a good connection here. Yeah, we have 15 ohms. And we want to be between 10 and 50. So we're good on that one. We'll check the bottom one. We're right on 15 again. So our elements are good. And just for the heck of it, we tested our temperature probe that we changed. And the new one that we have in here checks out at 1100 at room temperature. And that's what they say you want to have for, for that is 1100 ohms. So that's good. So we'll plug all this stuff back in. Actually, we're not going to plug those in yet. We're going to check something else first. Okay, we're going to go back to voltage. Put my probes in the wires. Now you have to be careful doing this because we are going to plug the stove back in. And we don't want these wires falling, hitting anything and shorting out. And we're going to turn the oven on, see if we hear a relay click and see if we have voltage coming down through those wires to the burners. Since we know the burners are good, Okay, I heard the click. So it's starting its preheating cycle that it would normally do for the oven. Okay, I can hear our relay clicking on and off and I can see the voltage reading is changing on here each time it does. So that's saying 116 volts there to the top element. Unplug the stove and we're going to plug that one back in. And we're going to do the same with the bottom. You can see the voltage reading there on the, the meter while well, we're just plugged into those two wires that would normally be on the burner. There's the click from the relay. So now that burner is shut off and it's sending power back to the top one in the oven now. And then it just clipped back to the bottom one again and the voltage is coming back up. So the relays are working okay on that circuit board. So we've checked our voltage and our ohms readings on all of the various parts for the burner elements, the temperature probe. Uh, we've made sure we have power from the house to the main power block on the stove coming up to the circuit board. We identified only 120 volts are actually going to the burners for the oven and they should be 240. So we can hear a relay clicking and the power is transferring through but it's only half the power. So it looks like we're going to replace this circuit board for a third time in this stove. Not sure how difficult it will be to get one right now but that's where we're going to have to go. Okay, so the stores have opened back up after the holidays, so we were able to find a new circuit board this morning. So now we're going to change this one. Uh, there's not a lot of plugs, and they're all pretty easily identifiable as to where they're going to go on the new board. This one, or if you can see it right here in the top corner, you do not need to unplug this one. It's part of the board itself, that one, so you don't have to worry about unplugging it. There's our new board, so that one there you don't have to unplug because it's a part of it. So that's what the face of this new one looks like when you get it. So the pad that has all of your, uh, your keypad that you're punching your buttons on, we need to peel it off, they're glued on. 
we need to peel it off the old one and reapply it to this new one. But I've done that said twice before. Hopefully it's still sticky enough that it will work. And of course you've got the stove unplugged when you're doing this. portion I'm talking about that is just glued on it's still very sticky okay so I'll show you here so I'm peeling that front off trying very carefully not to bend it and put any creases in it you don't want to fold it and the one I said you didn't need to unplug, this guy, is for that part of the board there. That part that you see. So you don't have to unplug that. You need to separate it from just this button keypad portion only. back in. So the first time this circuit board went in this stove, we bought a new board, put it in, it lasted for three months, and the same resistor burnt up again, and the store wouldn't do anything because it's electronic, and once you buy it, you own it. So then we bought another board, online from a different store and when it came in we noticed that that particular resistor had been changed to a heavier one and you can tell the ratings on those they've got colored stripes on them and you can look them up online and it'll tell you what the ratings and stuff are on those resistors and that's what I did when I got that board that had a different one and it was a heavier resistor so they knew they had an issue and they had fixed it. Now that resistor is not burnt on this board this time, but there is something they've changed because the board I just took out said revision F on the board. And this one says revision G. So they've made another revision for something. Okay, everything looks lined up on the front of it good before we start plugging stuff in. Actually, there's the resistor right there at the bottom that was burnt before. You can see where the burn mark is on the side of that plug that's right beside that resistor. So that was the one that kept burning out previously. Well, that's all there is to change in the circuit board in it. So I think we'll plug it back in and test it. Temperature hasn't changed on it yet, but I can start to feel warm air inside of it though. Oh, there we go. 101, 103, and that seems to have fixed our oven issue. As you can see there, the temperature is starting to climb. So things appear to be working again. Now that this film that you saw me peeling off, the first time I had to peel that off, it was quite difficult. It was extremely sticky. This time it came off not too bad because, as I said, this is the third time I've had this on and off here now. So once again, 
Took a circuit board to solve the problem. Uh, the actual model, this is a Kenmore as you can see. Now that doesn't mean a whole lot because a lot of these appliances are made by the same company and they're just branded differently. That circuit board is made by Electrolux and that same board when you start looking around online you'll find it in Frigidaire, Whirlpool and a number of other brands and if you actually go to the parent company Whirlpool there's a whole host of brands that they actually manufacture so it doesn't really seem to matter what appliance you're buying the components inside could all be made by the same company in the end anyhow but there you have it hopefully you find something useful in here if you have this kind of an issue with your stove